Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Miran Veer Singh, an emergency medicine specialist here in the UK and today I'm going to be looking at cells at work and this is a Japanese anime program to do with the human body and different cells and one of my work colleagues actually mentioned this to me that I should review this on my YouTube channel. I've never watched it, I don't have much understanding about it, but let's give it a shot and see exactly what is this program about. And apparently it's actually watched quite heavily around the world. In different parts of the world and other countries, they're using this program as lessons for biology and it's quite educational. So let's have a look and see how accurate this is. So I believe this is season two, episode one, and it's called Bump. And a white cell known as a neutrophil to us is essentially roaming around the body, fighting off germs. And then it meets a platelet known as backward cap, we will find out who backward cap is. And this platelet is apparently trying to get stronger. So let's delve into this episode and see what's going on. Right, so this this animal looks like <laughs> this animal looks like some kind of germ or something. And it's wanting to catch the immune system off guard with the cuteness. Well if you ever if you ever look at a germ under a microscope it's not exactly cute it's quite alien looking it's quite horrendous some of them actually look like things that you see in these alien movies with these massive massive legs and massive spikes and these kind of things even if you look at things like dust mites they look like these odd looking caterpillars we'll see how educational this program is got a lot of action sequences and fighting and the way they've depicted this germ doesn't exactly look very cute but i'm quite liking the anime and the production, it looks quite good. Potentially, for when I was younger, watching a program like this might actually have proven quite well nicely. So a macrophage. So this is another type of white blood cell that we have in the body. Right, okay, so we've got some killer T cells here. So this is quite good that they're using all these different terminologies, medical terminologies, and actually that's very accurate. So we've got the macrophage and we've got some killer T cells. So these are different types of white cells that are in the body and have different uses and abilities in terms of fighting off infection. So macrophages and T cells actually work together. Macrophages produce different chemicals called cytokines and other substances to stimulate these T cells to kick into action. Now T cells are specifically used to fight off viruses and specific viruses in that case whereas macrophages can be used to fight off a whole host of other invading organisms. So you may think that macrophages are actually stronger than T cells. No, it's not the case. They actually work together, they work in sync, and they have different abilities, but they need to work together in order to get the job done in fighting off these bugs. And yeah, invincible T cells. <laughs> Thirty-seven trillion cells working together. That's quite compassionate because the red cells are bringing nutrients to this cell and this cell is saying thanks for its tight quarters and uh, red cells do have to squeeze into tight spaces and go through and have to go through tight blood vessels and squeeze and mold and it does that through its clever structure and that's what makes it quite flexible quite like the thought that these red cells and white cells are actually talking and working together and essentially in the human body that's how a lot of the cells work and they talk to each other through different messengers which are chemical messengers. Alright so this white cell, I'm guessing it's the one that they were talking about earlier on is chasing this germ. Quite graphic, um, I'm not sure if young children should be watching that. Quite good, that's what exactly white cells are designed for. So it's quite good the white cells are fighting off any invading germs, preventing infection from taking hold. Alright, this must be backward cap because the cap's obviously on backwards. 
But so backward cap makes a, an interesting point about how platelets work together and they become cohesive in terms of binding together to form a platelet reaction to form blood clots in the in the damaged blood vessels and they all need to work together and it's actually that combined response and release of different factors that allows the platelets to bind and then allow a clotting cascade to occur and that's why we don't bleed out it's that unified response of them working together so the temporal vein that they're talking about is situated here next to the temporal artery so this is the location um, at the present time in the program So that's actually quite cool the way they've shown a capillary rupture and everything getting thrown around. I can imagine that's essentially what it would be inside a capillary because there's already pressure in there so when it gets damaged and there's rupturing you're going to get that kind of explosive force and hence we see that as a bruise. And you can see here that the cells are getting thrown around and everything's getting displaced. And it makes perfect sense because the red cell is the one saying don't worry about them because they actually can't do anything in that moment in time. They essentially will form part of the clot but that's because of the platelets and the coagulation factors. And I'm guessing why they're saying to the white cell is that you take care of yourself, is that in that situation it's every cell for themselves. Ah, okay, now we know why it's, the episode is called Bump. Um, so a bruise, a bump, has occurred to the head. So rather than cells getting thrown out of the capillary, they are just getting thrown up into the air, they'll get suspended, and then they'll eventually come down. Just like in physics, when you throw something up into the air, it will eventually reach its maximal height, and at that point, for a very brief period of time, it will seem like it's hanging free in the air. Hence why when you do things in slow motion, it will look like it is floating. But then gravity will then bring that back down. And so I'm guessing this is now when the cells are going to fall back down. So this is really good how accurate it is with the coagulation factors, the fibrin and the platelets all working together to form a clot and binding all the different cells together to stop the internal bleeding in this bruise, in the bump. I had to pause and come back because my baby woke up and family time always comes first. Got a bit of spare time again so we'll carry on where we left off. So wow, okay, a mega karyocyte, the cell that actually produces the platelet. This program is actually very accurate and it's very useful information for anyone who's watching. So I'm quite liking this program and I wish it was around when I was younger to have watched. So again, it's very accurate at this point in time because yes, the veins on the scalp are more liable to bleeding and easily bruise. And that's because as mentioned there, it's to do with the structure of the fat layer and the way the veins are kept open. They're not allowed to contract and squeeze down. And therefore these capillaries and veins that rupture, they just tend to bleed and keep bleeding unless pressure is applied. For example, external compression or there's very good clotting and platelet cascade occurring inside the vessels themselves. And that's why those people who present to the emergency department that we get to see who have scalp or head injuries, they tend to have quite large, nasty looking bruises. I quite like that, that the white cell 1146 
is saying to the mega carrier side that not to put pressure on the cell otherwise she will end up not being able to do the task and that's a very good example to use in real life as well so you need enough pressure but not too much pressure and it depends on the type of person on their personality and what we call their persona and their genetic makeup is and that's simply because you need enough pressure in order to motivate push people forwards push them in the correct direction so it's using positive feedback but actually negative pressure or when applying too much pressure that it becomes too much of a burden on their shoulders and therefore then that person is going to fall down so this is actually a very good psychological lesson in that sense <laughs> using positive feedback like we mentioned before fantastic she's giving gold medals out to those performing the best actions this is a very good way to stimulate children Wow, look at that, a primary blood clot has formed very quickly. <laughs> Quite like this. And that's the fibrin clot, that pink mesh with the coagulation factors. So she's going to become the hero, diving down to get that last coagulation factor and hopefully everybody else is going to come together and help her out as well. It's a brilliant teamwork, it's a brilliant message for everyone out there. So we've got the mega carrier site, their team leader who's crying at the moment. And I'm guessing that's because of the positivity, the cohesion that she's mentioned and the platelets working together. And there's a very good message for normal life. Working together is so much better than actually putting people down, than creating enemies. Working together brings more positivity. You get better results, you get a better outcome. And simply, it just makes your day go so much nicer. And that's how we like to work in a &E. We like to make things fun, we like to be positive, even though it's stressful. Giving medals to everyone. Now that's, that's the mark of a good leader. That's really nice. That's really nice, that's the good way to end it. That's a really nice message and the way the feedback was given and the positivity in that. I actually think it's an excellent series. It's an excellent program. It's got the science, it's got biology, it's medicine, it's fun, it's got psychology in there as well. And I think it's quite well-rounded the way it incorporates all these different factors into it. It's not boring like some of the cartoons or other programs or other programs that are out there which are unidirectional. I'm all for education, knowledge enhancement, productivity and also having fun and all these things that I've described can be done in a fun way and this program I think is an excellent marker of how to make a good program. So it was a nice little journey of a little platelet not knowing about how good they are or how well she could work and then working together as a team and then the whole team coming together and the master who was originally shown to be a bit nasty shows their true self which is a very good coach a very good team leader and this is the way that we should be in life as well so i really enjoyed that program i hope you guys did as well and if you liked it leave a comment down below and tell me if you'd like me to do another episode of this i hope you like my other content around here if you want to see me reviewing the batman fight scene part one and part two so they're going to be showing over here and just check them out and i hope you like the rest of the content that i make remember make sure you keep safe look after yourselves and hopefully see you in the next episode. See you all. Thanks.